So what's going on Toxic Gamers? Today we have a death straight from Ubisoft that went rogue, that went gang gang and that have leaked the fact that why Ubisoft is doing what they're doing. He leaked the making of the BBC Samurai though, yay! He talked about why Ubisoft is racist towards black people, Asian people, why are they using LGBT people as shields. He went crazy, that man didn't even hold a thing though. First of all, salute to Captain BBC! We gotta always salute to the king, the captain, the BBC Samurai. Like the video if you think there are two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders. Guys, I'm not a savage, I gotta give everybody equal chances, okay? But I wanna show you this. Check this out. Shout out to Andy Pants. Roll it. How does a company like Ubisoft, with some of the most celebrated IP in all of gaming, go from a stock price of $110 per share in 2018 to being barely worth $11 right now? How does a company go from creating characters like Ezio, Edward Kenway, and Sam Fisher to creating characters like Kane, Ganey Rojas, and Ivor? Although Ubisoft's stock price only began to peak and then plummet in 2018, the seeds for its destruction were being sown as early as 2012. In the ensuing years, Ubisoft would endure a complete creative collapse under the everything white privilege is the problem diversity equity and inclusion it says who is trying to get in the room but can't okay weight of its own wokeness greed and sexual abuse scandals which revealed that the rot went all the way to the top our story Holy. begins with a former ubisoft employee who chose to speak to me he didn't want his name revealed so we will call him simply chad this dude is based as hell he spent 11 years working for the montreal studio this is ubisoft's Ugh. flagship studio with 4,000 man i live like almost like half an hour away from them almost it's less than that guys i'm in montreal i apologize on their behalf okay oh, i'm sorry yeah i'm sorry ah oui c'est le calice de tabernacle putain mais m'a pas les couilles bro m'a pas les couilles mais je, je apologize i am very very sorry my friends because of ubisoft we're dealing with this crap uh not in the in the modern uh, days uh, video games man i swear to god man this like is crazy bro some people and the creative direction for basically every assassin's creed game far cry game and splinter cell game was done here ubisoft has many studios around the world but the primary creative vision for games always came from the big western studios like montreal yeah! I hey, whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hey. tranquilo brother tranquilo papi i already apologize on their behalf bro like damn man why you gotta do that man a front row seat to the collapse of ubisoft chad explains when he first started at the company in 2011 he was working on animation tools and rigging for a new driver game funny enough this game would watch later become well? watchdogs chad mm. explains when i started at ubisoft the production floor was 95 percent yo honestly watchdogs was such a good idea though had it been watchdogs was made by rockstar games holy that would have been just one of the best game ever like guys i'm not even gonna sugarcoat it sugarcoat it okay Ubisoft had a really good idea, but they just like, bro, what, what, are, what are the, what, what are, what are y'all sick is doing, man? Like, damn. Like, let me show you this, okay? This is absolutely crazy. Uh, check this out. So you got a kid, right? Hey, BBC Samurai, BBC Samurai. Like, what the hell? What the hell, Ubisoft? You sick is crazy, bro. Damn, y'all sick is crazy. And you know, a couple of minutes later, uh, he's out here like, damn, man. Like, everybody's like saluting, saluting. Like, everybody's like bowing down to the BBC Samurai, right? Holy, what is going on? And this is like in feudal Japan, though. And of course, they made the only black guy in the game. Yay! They always do that, man. I, l listen, man. I am one more them making a black gay dude getting punched in the throat away from having a nervous breakdown, okay? I recently watched uh, 21 Jump Street, so there was a dialogue in that movie, so... <laughs> I, I'm kind of I, I feel like that I'm gonna use that structure of that dialogue. It was funny It was funny the way they said it in that movie so and male there was always a problem of nepotism at Ubisoft But it was started at Ubisoft the production floor was 95% male There was always a problem of nepotism at Ubisoft But it was still mostly meritocratic if somebody did a shit job You would tell them when you have a bunch of guys working together You can be frank and you could be direct. It's efficient but when you're working with women and minorities, you waste a lot of time. So it's a simple fact that the culture that created Assassin's Creed 2 and Black Flag was 95% men. Let that sink in. Holy Having worked in male-dominated environments myself, I know exactly what Chad is talking about here. Men don't bullshit around. Toxic masculinity. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. Men are direct. My bad. Design and technology are always a balancing act, and so you can't waste time with people's feelings getting hurt. This is why stressful environments always work best when they are exclusively male. But the clarion call of a company that will one day collapse happens in 2012. Ubisoft starts their diversity hiring initiatives. <gasps> it starts small at first and grows worse and worse. No longer are people being hired based on their talent. People are now being hired because they are a woman, they're gay. 
Hey, bro! Whoa, tranquilo. So we hired people because they were good at making games. We hired people because they were black or a woman or gay. Nah, bro. Like, stop like associating black people with that crap, too, bro. Like, damn. And they always do that. They can never make a normal black person, a black human, in a video game nowadays uh, or in movies for that matter. These things are insanely racist, man. Insanely racist. Whenever, wherever you look, bro, they always be doing that. Like, I cannot be the only one, man. I've been pointing out in my videos, but but it's happening so much, right? Even in that Tomb Raider, like, we have been covering that, right? Tomb Raider situation, Larry Croft, they turned Lara Croft, so they hate women as well, first of all. So they change uh, Lara Croft to, to looking like a man and feeling like a man. So they turned Lara Croft into Lorenzo, to Larry Croft, gave her that Abby the Brock Lesnar treatment from The Last of Us 2, right? And then there, you, you if you saw that there was a black person in the back, guess what? Was also gay was fat as well on top they always do that they can never make a normal black person in a video game bro they and to them brown people like me they don't exist to them brown people like me don't even exist bro holy i'm pakistani by the way uh, so i'm brown uh, i'm ethnically brown a they're black etc ubisoft is now hired i'm a minority guys yeah i'm gonna pull that race card i'm gonna pull that minority card okay Get mama with that, man. These things always do that, bro. They, I'm as a brown man, I'm sick and tired of them playing the race card. Okay, how about that? But I'm uh, to them, I'm a minority, right? Where is my representation? Where is, where, where is my representation at Ubisoft? Where I'm a brown man. I, I'm a minority. I'm a minority. I'm from a third world country. Where is my where? Where is my representation? Where is my... Get my mom with that, bro. Get my mom with that, bro. Hiring for that dreaded word that goes on to destroy everything good. Giversity. The quartering blew the lid on similar training seminars going on at Ubisoft in 2018. An insane sentence from these propaganda seminars jumped out to me. 47% of game players in Canada are women. Yes, 50% of people who play Candy Crush are women, but never now nor in the past have 50% of AAA Ubisoft game players been women. When your company training contains such bold-faced lies, you know you're in for a troubled future. Chad goes on. Ubisoft made a huge change to try to change this 95% male demograph on the production floor. When I left, it was like 75%. Not only did they not want it to be all male, they wanted it to not be white people anymore. The diversity <sighs> hires, we saw that a lot. And it does change the culture because you cannot be blunt with people anymore. Resolving an issue takes twice or- Okay, I like <laughs> Yeah, I like this, okay, so he got like soldiers. He got soldiers. He got real soldiers, right? Real men. And then the he just switched it to that damn homie. Damn. Thrice as long. Ooh, could you maybe do it this way? Fear of hurting people's feelings, HR complaints, etc. Now, just to be perfectly clear here, I don't think myself nor Chad would say the problem here is that people aren't white or aren't men. That's not really the issue. The issue is and always has been skill. Are these people good at their jobs? Look at Bungie when they made Halo 3 or Bioware when they made Mass Effect 2. Good studios in the 2000s had a lot of white guys, but they also had a lot of Asian dudes, Indian dudes, Latin dudes, and occasionally there was a random woman who was good at her job. Yeah, yeah, it don't matter. Like, it should not matter. Like, what, where you're from, uh, what religion you follow or not follow, uh, your color, color of the skin, man or woman, or LGTV or not LGTV, straight or not straight. It shouldn't matter. None of that should matter. Like, none of this, like, this should matter. If you're good at the job, you're good at the job, bro. You're a good human. You're good at the job. Hey, good stuff, man. Yeah, like, even if you're, like, uh, yeah, if you're good for the job, like, duh, like, make the game. Make a product or whatever, wherever you work. If you're a constructor work, a construction worker, and you're good at that, yes, you're right for the job. Regardless of your color of the skin, right? This, this is absolutely ludicrous, man. Like, of course, they have been hiring based off of DEI only. And this is why their games are turning out to be the way they are, right? At first, they were supposed to have a Japanese male protagonist. This, is, uh, this was leaked, and uh, you're going to hear about it in a second, too. This was leaked, uh, and they changed it to Yasuke after the BLM situation. And not just that, they were like, hey, he black, so let's just make him gay as well. You know what I'm saying? This is insanely disrespectful because the real Yasuke, it, it, this character is based off of a real person, Yasuke, who was not a samurai, is what we learned. And he was also not gay as well. They still did it. If he was gay in real life, then makes sense. You know, you're just making him as he was in real life in the game. But now, nah, bro, like he black, 
Ihige. You know what I'm saying? Like, they always do that, bro. They always do that, man. They always do that to my, to my homeboys like that, bro. Job two. Chad put it this way. I worked with some women oftentimes who were extremely competent. People who had been there before, very strong-willed, knew their shit. But new hires? You start to ask, how the f*** did you get hired? The person lacking talent doesn't realize they're bad, but the competent people do. The people that are competent, they know each other. The people who are lacking don't realize that they suck. DEI hires. Most of them f***ing sucked. They have like 25% of the normal productive output of a normal employee, pulling time away from the more senior people as well. So Brad. Ubisoft is still 95% men and will still enjoy success for a few more years after this. 2013 Black Flag comes out, 2017 Origins comes out, but slowly over time there is this push for diversity and it's like holes in Swiss cheese. When you start hiring people, yeah, 2024 Star Wars Outlaws, you know, the BBC Shadows, or I mean Assassin's Creed Shadows of the BBC, or my bad, uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows, what's the name? Assassin's Creed Shadows, that's the name only? Okay, my, my bad, guys, I thought. It's Shadows of the BBC, right? So 2013, 2018, 10 DEI hires, 100, 1,000, 10,000 DEI hires! What the hell? Of course, he's exaggerating, but he's trying to make the point, right? And of course, the quadruple A game, the Skull and Bones. Of course, the quadruple A one, man. This suck is crazy. Ubisoft was so good. Honestly, man, Ubisoft was one of a kind company. I should not be saying, in comparison to today, they, they were so good. But back in the days, they were among one of the best companies uh, in terms of video games. Uh, you know, of course, like people were like, hey, every year is kind of like the same bow squash. But, you know, it eyed, it eyed, it bustin', it bustin'. Certified hood classic even sometimes. But I remember like their games were very, very good back in the days. They cared about it and their ideas were very unique to Watch Dogs. Very good idea, but I have to be real. Uh, back when Watch Dogs 1 came out, it wasn't that good though. Uh, I'm sorry. But it, it wasn't that good. Uh, for the first couple of hours, it was very good. Novel. But afterward, like, every mission started feeling the same. It's like the same thing with Mafia 3, right? Setting amazing. I still remember uh, the setting was amazing. But every mission kind of starting... It started to feel the same, same-ish, right? And Watch Dogs was a really good idea. I'm not sure about Watch Dogs 2. I believe I got it for free on... Uh, when they were given out for free, but I haven't played it yet. I got it on the, the, the PlayStation... Uh, on the PC, though. I believe Ubisoft was given out for free. Uh, not sure about like the I believe Watch Dogs 3 I did play a little bit, but yeah, it was like whatever too. So yeah, right? It, it's just Ubisoft for you. Well, based on their gender, your company will only last for so long. Chad put it this way. A woman will propose an idea, come up with the stupidest fucking thing ever. The manager has to try to be nice. Meanwhile, the talented people at the company are looking at each other trying to not saying anything. And this terrible ideas clog up company resources. We have to okay. wait, we have to be polite. In a group of men, we could be direct but you can't be direct with women. Even some dudes were pussies and you couldn't be direct with them. <laughs> Chad told me about working with a guy who was balding and yet came to work in little girl dresses and talked like a little girl. Can you imagine how distracting and annoying that would be during the day? Chad told me that 2011 was a time of open and direct criticism at Ubisoft. Somebody would say something stupid and they would get laughed out of the room. But by 2020, with all the women and gay people and diversity hires, everything was changed because of diversity and we can't hurt people's feelings. And of course, the quality of the video games went down and down and down yeah. when you have a culture like because because they hired they hired people that were not even about making video games. That simple as that. Simple as that. And I'm once again gonna say this, bro. Hire people that are good for the job, regardless whether they they the, the way they look or men, female, or like uh, straight or not straight. If you're good for making the video game, you're good for making the video game. Right? Simple as that. They need to hire gamers who are actually devs that understand how to make a game, right? Simple as that. Simple as that. Because there are a lot of gamers, for example, when I was young as well, right? Like I was thinking about becoming a game dev. Thank God I didn't do that because right now the games industry is just crap. Thank God I didn't do it, okay? Thank God I didn't do it. Uh, but, but I remember, right? Like, yeah, uh, and there were other uh, people or I should say kids when I was a kid in my class that were also gamers and their their dream was to also become I'm talking about like Black Ops 1 when Black Ops 2 came out I'm talking that era yeah man that's a that, that was a dinosaur era though in the internet days right yeah back in the days like every kid's dream was to become a game dev and make a Call of Duty game okay <laughs> make a Call of Duty game right I remember that that, that era was one of a kind so you, you, you suck is just need to hire people that 
that are good for the job that are actually gamers looking to make games for the gamers simple as that simple as that regardless of their skin color straight not straight or woman or female female or men woman female same thing bruh. but men or female it don't matter it don't matter just hire people that's good for the job bruh. like this so the stage was being set for assassin's creed shadows and star wars outlaws but jump back to 2013 chad told me about creating the rigging for a character on watchdogs that needed to look at a phone Brett. The art director on the project was a DEI hire and a woman who was completely inept at her job. So every time they needed to get a concept approved, this woman would make them fully render the animation out because she had zero vision and was bad at her job. This was one of the many, many ways that DEI hires began to cripple Ubisoft. Chad described another time at Ubisoft he saw one of his employees, we'll call her Claire, opening up a file, editing it, closing it, opening up a file, editing it, closing it. He noticed this happening for several days. After day four, Chad asked Claire, what the hell are you doing? And she said, Somebody booked me for two weeks to go into 10,000 different files and change the name of something and close it out. Chad said, Are you freaking kidding me? I could have run a batch for you and we could have had this done overnight. Your time is valuable. You should be working on something productive. Chad said he ran into countless examples like this and I have heard it called the diversity tax. And it's just people who haven't done a job for very long or aren't very good at a job get promoted into places of power and then it pulls the whole institution down. These problems only became multiplied when DEI hires got promoted as they often did. Think about it. Now people like Claire, who never should have been promoted, are managing a team of people who are making decisions just as bad as she was. <laughs> Promoting these people is like the cancer going from just your arm to now your heart, where it can pollute the whole body. Is it starting to make sense now why we got Assassin's Creed Shadows? Another angle to this we haven't even talked about is that often Ubisoft is making these shady deals with government agencies and DEI and diversity. Ubisoft's Canadian tax incentives fueling DEI and the devs development of Assassin's Creed Shadows of the BBC question mark Damn. is a huge part of closing those deals Damn. ubisoft has notoriously made shady deals with the canadian government and because canada is so freaking gay i guarantee hey, hey, whoa whoa hey whoa 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 hey, you dare don't you dare say that don't you dare i'm serious i'm serious <laughs> don't you dare say that man i'm gonna hit you up with my canadian air salt though my canadian air. I, I bought it at canadian tire actually uh, a couple of years ago i remember canadian tire is like a walmart but you have like a lot of uh a lot of goodies uh, there right so i bought it from canadian this is a maple version guys maple version but nah man tranquilo tranquilo independence tranquilo okay tranquilo tranquilo okay but i apologize on their behalf okay Bruh. how about that you those deals have to do with like 30 percent women my wife is canadian i know how <laughs> yo you uh, i swear to god bro i swear to god man y'all suck is crazy man and have to be hired 30 percent indian or whatever the moment you stop hiring based on merit your company is toast before we move on i wanted to ask chad about the infamous watchdogs 2013 oh, e3 footage trailer yeah, fans complained yeah. that what we got in the game was significantly downgraded from the trailer they faked their e3 footage it was all scripted you free a lot of resources from the system so you can crank up all the other stuff. For example, animated movies always look better than in-game graphics because everything is baked in. Chad, of course, told them, you need to show the render live from the PlayStation 3, but the Ubisoft marketing side doesn't listen to the guys who actually make the game like Chad, and they mm. paid the price for it. Thanks for subscribing. Real quick, guys, I want to say, if you guys are into UFOs and conspiracies, definitely check out the second channel, Scare Reacts. Links in the pinned comment in the description. Also, check out the Instagram. Uh, Links are in the pinned comment. I right, let's get back to the content now, boo boo. I would appreciate it, gang. Eh? Here we go. Another thing Chad hit on here is what killed the creativity at Ubisoft because in the mid 2000s, Ubisoft had quite a bit of creativity, and you might ask, what happened to that? That I believe can be laid at the feet of this little thing called the editorial board. Mm. Eve Gimo is the CEO of Ubisoft. The dude is a woke leftist homo and complete degenerate, according to Chad. His editorial board are his closest advisors, and Chad tells me they're all wokesters, just like Eve. I'm imagining eyes wide shut parties, trips to Epstein's Island, etc. The editorial meets in Paris and they will occasionally have small designers from one of their many companies come to Paris and show off a game. When this is working, it creates incredible stuff. Did you know the first Assassin's Creed game in 2007 was originally supposed to be a Prince of Persia game, but a really creative Ubisoft designer came up with Assassin's Creed instead? Uh, mm, Patri Patrice de Sigletz is his name. I don't know how to say that name. Delete. Uh, I believe that's how you say it. Patrice. Patrice, that's how I, I, I do speak French, so they. Delay, delay, delay. I believe that's how you. Uh, yeah, I'm butchering it probably. But Patrice Daly created Assassin's Creed. Just a dude uh, working at Ubisoft. Okay, I gotta start. <laughs> I gotta start. But any French homies? Anyone from Montreal here? Let me know how you pronounce it. I believe Daly, Daly. That's how you would pronounce it. I could be wrong. But Patrice, Patrice. 
In 2013, Ubisoft was working on a God of War type game, but of course it got canned. Chad did not confirm this, but I wonder if a really inventive game like Driver San Francisco also was an idea that got approved by the editorial board. So back when the editorial board was working, it was doing really good stuff. But Chad explains that every AC game got bigger and bigger around 2018. The editorial board started trying to inject Assassin's Creed into everything. Mm. This is when we start to see the Ubisoftification of the industry take hold. Yeah. Now everything needs to be. Yeah, like every, and everything becomes the same, same-ish, then you lose the charm, you lose the, the novelty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with the Unreal Engine. Even though Unreal Engine is very, very good, I always give this example. Unreal Engine is actually very good. No complaints about it, other than the fact that when everybody start using it, and they don't change anything, then every game start to look the same-ish, and then people have that fatigue about it. It's like Call of Duty right now, right? Like, of course, Call of Duty has always been the same game every year, but compare the original Modern Warfare 3 2011 to Black Ops 1. Big difference. Then compare it to Black Ops 2. Big difference. Then you got uh, Black Ops 3. Different, right? But after Modern Warfare 2019, every game started looking and feeling the same especially with the menus the graphics and the movement and you know all of that right uh, and st to this day ever since modern warfare 2019 till till black ops 6 2024 all the games are looking similar yet yeah, they're making changes uh, they're making a look graphically it's getting better and better but it still look the same the art feels the same the 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 visuals feel the same and therefore people feel like that they're playing the same game right they're playing the same game same game and same game even though call of duty nba's the nfl's and fifa's and all that they are the wwe's the 2k's right all of these games are very very similar but call of duty still had a little bit of difference back in the days like i said black ops 1 to black ops 2 to black ops 3 right and modern warfare 3 the original modern warfare 2 the original and all that we had differences especially with call of duty ghost advanced warfare not necessarily talking about the movement but i'm talking about the, from the visual standpoint they felt different now every feel every game feels the same and ubisoft they went the same route to be Assassin's Creed. Far Cry needs to be Assassin's Creed. Ghost Recon needs to be Assassin's Creed. Watch Dogs needs to be Assassin's Creed. You can imagine it gets worse when the editorial board sees how much microtransactions can make. <laughs> Suddenly, microtransactions are in every game. <laughs> so whenever you see the way that creativity was murdered in Ubisoft games post-2015 yeah. or so, the way every game that was made turned into a bland open world with tons of points on a map, just know it wasn't the guys on the bottom doing this. It came from the top. It was all about money, pride, and greed, and it came from Gimo's hand-picked editorial board. Gimo. Speaking of the rank-and-file workers, Gimo. I asked Chad, where was all the woke leftist propaganda coming from? Was it coming from Gimo or coming from folks on the bottom? Both, Chad tells me. I worked with a lot of normal guys, guys who I would take my lunch break with, joke around with, but when woke culture arrived, they went along with it. Some of them embraced it because they believed in it. Some of them embraced it because they think it's going to give them a chance with a woman. Some of them embraced it because it would give them a chance for career advancement. Apparently, a man like Trump getting up and speaking pure facts created an enormous wave of triggered feminist and beta cuck men in the community of people cr who create video games. Ubisoft Montreal was just as affected as anywhere else, and this started to sweep through the company. This was made even worse when the lockdowns happened and the George Floyd situation took over the media in 2020. Uh, when yeah. you're a leftist and you don't actually have a moral code or ultimate purpose in life. And that's what we heard. Like, uh, after BLM, they changed Yasuke. That, that's when they added Yasuke, right? Because originally it was supposed to be a Japanese male protagonist and they had him made. And after BLM, they created Yasuke. And uh, this is not my opinion. This is what we were hearing from our report. And alongside it, we also did hear that they showed the gameplay to insiders and you saw Yasuke just in a shop in a grocery store going crazy just chopping everybody right how tone deaf you gotta be man these things are insanely racist towards the Asian people and black people of course and using LGBT people as shields right so after that that's when they decided to do that of course like uh, then this uh, hip-hop music plays too there's another there's the another the castle. like you got the Japanese homies crying right here damn bro corrupt samurai named Fujioka Protector turned persecutor. Greed cannot rule this village. Not while I have breath in my lungs and a blade in my head. I said kill him. Got that. Got, got. Damn, like, look at that, bro. Holy. They, 
<laughs> these suckers are hella racist, bro. These suckers are insanely tone deaf, bro. Like, to do that, like, uh, yeah, just because he black, he... <laughs> And you gotta play some hip hop music, even though that did not that did not exist back in feudal Japan. Though, other than that, that beats fire. I gotta agree, that beats fire. Bruh. But <laughs> wrong context, wrong setting, brothers. Wrong setting. You desperately look for a cause to fight for, so the left's rallying cry became things like equality and injustice. Bruh. What evidence did they have that injustices had happened? Oh, just cleverly Ooh. edited viral clips by gay communists looking to create more social upheaval and turn people against cops, the very people protecting them? But this goes back to what I was saying in another video. When you're a leftist and you have no real morality, you need to see racism and sexism everywhere because calling these things out, even when they're completely imaginary and have no evidence, gives your stupid life meaning. So trouble was brewing at Ubisoft because the feminists were loud and the beta cuck men who wanted a crumb of sex from them were willing to go along with whatever the women were saying. And this, of course, creates the Assassin's Creed Shadows disaster. In case you're not familiar with it, people have been begging Ubisoft for years to make a samurai Assassin's Creed game. So they finally make one, but this time the main protagonist of the story is black. Say mm. what? Why would you do that? But this is what happens when you chase trends rather than timeless and good. You have a black samurai because of dumb liberal white woman at Ubisoft. Girls with dreams! <laughs> You're just manipulating. You're toxic. I am strong. I am independent. Dee. Mm -mm. Good characters. In another video, I reflected on how odd this was. It would be like Assassin's Creed Origins not starring an Egyptian man, but instead starring a white guy from Ohio named Brad. <laughs> but of course, we found out there was a political motivation behind this decision. They did it because of racism and equality, and I'm a childless cat owner, so I have to try to destroy the things men love. And once Bruh. you, as Eve Gimo, have committed to the Gimo. insanity, you have to- It's Gimo, okay? Gimo, motherfucker. Double down on it when they attack. This, of course, makes you buy off an authority to lie about Japanese culture so you can make the woke leftist there game you want. There this, of course, makes you buy bots to leave comments praising the game. This, there of course, makes you disregard all fan feedback to the contrary and everyone saying this is an awful idea. In one particularly idiotic statement, Gimo said, We condemn these hateful attacks against our creatives. But... Uh, our uh, creative... Uh, LOL. Nobody is attacking your developers. We just don't want the game and we're not buying it. But the pussy ass left always spins it as this is a hate campaign. You're being so hateful. What they are really saying is Listen man, as a brown man as a as a brown man myself, bro, I'm sick and tired of them playing the race card, bruh. I'm sick and tired, bro. Where's my representation at, bro? Like y'all suckers are like everybody racist, but y'all suckers are racist towards white people, black people, Asian people, to to you guys brown people like me don't even exist. Damn man, and y'all suckers are hella sexist towards men as well, you don't like men apparently. Half of the world population is men, most of the gamers, uh, taxi gamers that you like to say, you like to call us as. Yeah, the gamers are mostly men. For games like that, of course females do play as well. But for games like these, most of the audience, most, not all, but most of the audience is men. Damn, man, y'all suckers are getting cooked right now. We want to make the game we want to make, and we're going to ram it with political messages, and you're a racist if you don't gobble it down. Sorry, honey boo boo, not gonna happen. So it would be a shame if I don't talk about the sex scandals a bit. Basically, the editorial board has a ton of power because they decide what games get made and where hundreds of millions of dollars go. Now, remember that most of these guys are woke leftist communists have- uh, Can a brother get two pennies? Uh, Bruh. Uh, wrong timing? Okay, my bad, guess my bad, my bad. No morality whatsoever and are easily bought off with sex and you have a recipe for disaster. Starting as early as 20- Is that Jackie Chan? That is Jackie Chan, bro, what the oh, hell? Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Looks like him though. Looks like him. Uh, looks like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks like him, though. Damn. Yay, yeah, looks like him. Teen, we see these accusations come out. And as of Not today, him. in 2024, you have five people facing criminal charges in France right now for what they did. I read reports of a bunch of men holding a woman down while a director kissed her. Just really weird, evil stuff. I asked Chad, were these guys liberals or conservatives? Oh, liberals for sure, Chad tells me. He goes on... It's always the male feminist. It's always the wokester. You can never trust a male feminist. Nobody Bruh. believes in that stuff unless you're emasculated. 
It's all about getting access to the women, using their power to get access to women. It's not going to be the Christian who does this stuff. It's not the to toxic masculinity guy who gets into that stuff. It's the women's studies major. It's the guy talking about equality. Women who say men are trash, it's because the women are hanging out with progressive men. Guys who go to church or are into their faith would never be involved with this stuff. I know for a fact Tommy Francois was a leftist who harassed women. Ashraf Damn. Ismail was the M Middle Eastern guy directing Valhalla who stepped down. But he wasn't actually a religious guy at all, he was a progressive. The dude left his wife during the production of Valhalla, and I know for a fact he doesn't follow the teachings of Islam. So it's almost <laughs> never the religious guys doing this Yo, stuff. Man! No! Bro, imagine leaving your wife over, over this crap, though. Now, of course, like, if there were some problems between, yeah, which we don't know, context is definitely needed, then, yeah, everybody got a situation, right? So I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but if your only situation to leave your waifu was because of, hey, I gotta work, I gotta work on Assassin's Creed! Because the next game is due, and the next game is gonna be about the BBC Samurai. So we need to get this one out first, and then we gotta work on the BBC. So, yeah, right? Like, damn. Then I'm like, bruh. Like, bruh. Like, what you doing? And then later on, he left. He peaced out too, right? Crazy. Uh, it's the left. It's the wokesters. It's Crazy. the very people who call this stuff out who are doing it as always. All right, so just to close this video out, I want it to be perfectly clear what caused the downfall of Ubisoft. And we have now heard from a source deeply connected in the, in the industry for 11 years. Back in the 2000s, Ubisoft made some incredible games. They had perhaps what some might call a toxic male culture. But we know that there were no reports of sexual abuse and some of the best games ever got created. That, that is crazy, right? Toxic masculinity, you would call it. But then you find out there were no crazy amount of reports like that. But then when you have no toxic masculinity, according to them, then you have reports like that. This is, this is crazy, man. We, we saw the pattern with Activision as well a while ago. Yeah, man, this is this is video games right now, man. Whatever you do, do not check out this video. In fact, check out this video, man. This recently just happened. Insane story just went down as well. On the left, we have another streamer getting caught cheating as well. Check out both of these videos and I'll see you right there.